Today, testimony continued in James Crumbly's involuntary manslaughter trial. Last night, Crumbly had his call and messaging privileges reduced after allegedly making threatening statements. CBS News Detroit Andres Gutierrez is on your block from the Oakland County Circuit Court in Pontiac with the latest. Court ended early today because the prosecution essentially ran out of witnesses they had scheduled to testify today. The judge booked out two weeks for this trial, but she said that they are so far ahead of schedule that it is likely that the jury will begin deliberations at some point next week. But today was another day of heavy testimony. Some emotional moments in the courtroom this morning when the lead crime scene investigator at the Oakland County Sheriff's Office said the shooter fired 32 times and showed the path where those bullets traveled. Along with that were some graphic photos that you didn't see at home, but we did. One of them showed the bodies of Hannah St. Juliana and Madison Baldwin in the hallway after being shot. Another photo was of a pool of blood in the bathroom where Justin Chilling died. The jury also got to see video from the interrogation room when investigators spoke with Crumbly's parents after their son committed mass murder. In that video, James Crumbly told detectives he had hidden the gun in a case and that the ammo was underneath some jeans in a different spot, but also mentioned that he had been taking his son to the gun range so he could teach him about gun safety. We did see a member of the jury cry and others were visibly upset when the assistant principal at Oxford High School was on the stand and they played surveillance video of her finding the body of Tate Meir. At that point, could you identify who the student was? At that point, I rolled him over and I realized that, that it was Tate Meir. Did you notice if he was injured? At that point, I knew that he had a bullet wound. That he had what? I'm sorry. He had a bullet wound entering the, the back of his head and exiting in the front. Was he still alive? I hoped he was. I he was very gray, but I I started to resuscitate. Immediately. Earlier in the day, we heard from the office manager from the gun store where James Crumbly purchased the weapon that was used on the day of the shooting. She says she sold it with a gun lock, but the prosecution has said in the past that that lock was never used. In Pontiac, Andres Gutierrez, CBS News, Detroit. And joining us now to break down what happened in court today is trial attorney Johnny Hawkins. Thanks for joining us, Johnny. Thanks for having me. Hello, guys. So we just left off in Andres' story uh, talking about that weapon, the weapon that was used in the shooting. What do you think the significance is in really making those arguments and zeroing in on the sale of that weapon? Well, I think they were, I think the prosecutor is just trying to show that he, that he was responsible, that being the dad, or that he had culpability with regard to this. I don't think they did enough today, though, with regard to showing that the dad was, was, wrong, if you will. Uh, he went in, he, he bought a gun. He didn't say who he was buying the gun for. He had no intentions in that moment of making that his point. And so I just I just think it was just something that happened. And uh, we'll see. Yeah, we've been hearing the same thing from other legal experts that we've been talking to throughout the day. We know we talked with you, Attorney Hawkins, during the trial for Jennifer as well. What are you noticing as far as the differences in the way this trial is being handled versus hers? I'm very encouraged by what this defense attorney is doing. Uh, she's strategic. She's clearly uh, studied um, and knows what's going on. She's prepared, and she is just very, yeah, I like it. She, she's surgical, uh, to be honest with you, and I think that is giving a, a good impression to the jury that, hey, he has good representation. We may find him guilty, but it won't be because of lack of quality representation in this case. That's, that's the difference to me, the big difference. Are there any other arguments that the prosecution is trying to make or trying to present that you think the defense is doing a good job of sort of poking holes in? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Which of the prosecution's arguments do you think the defense is doing a good job of poking holes in? Uh, hmm. Which of the arguments? I'm trying to, I'm having a problem hearing you. I'm sorry. Technical difficulties. Can you repeat it one more time? I'm so sorry. It's all right. I guess I'm asking. The prosecution is is trying to paint a certain picture, and the defense seems to be rather efficient and is is doing a good job of sort of poking holes and and countering some of those arguments. Where do you think the defense is being successful in that? Oh, so I think just with with regard to showing that Dad didn't know as much as they want to believe or have the jury believe that he knew, so that he would then have had a reason to 
be more cautious. They're not showing culpability on, on behalf of dad. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, there's still a lot more testimony to get through, but based on what you're seeing so far and the way things are going, do you think it's possible that he could end up with a not guilty verdict? I don't think that. Unfortunately, I don't think that. Um, I think the prosecutor's ready. They have a strong case. I just think this gentleman, if he's going to get off, it's going to be because of this, this lawyer and the way that she's managing this case. But the facts are still the facts, you know, and I'm just... I'm just happy again, and I'm encouraged that she's doing such a good job, but these are really tough facts. So I, I can't say right now that he'll be found not guilty. I, I would be remiss if I did that. I wouldn't be, yeah, a good lawyer. We know that at least some of the jurors are familiar with what's led up to this, with Jennifer's case, that she was found guilty, and they've said that they can be impartial. I don't know if you have experience with, with two parents being charged uh, with the same crimes, but. Have you seen that before? Is is that a thing where where jurors might split culpability between two parents of the same child? I don't buy it. I, I just don't buy that they would be able to do that, especially if they're saying that they know that mom was char charged and found guilty. Well, in this case, again, the prosecutor's saying that the dad actually awarded, not awarded, gave him or gifted this gun, this gun that killed these people to uh, the son. So, no, I'm not buying that they can be impartial. I'm sorry. As we move into day three on Monday, what do you think that the prosecution and the defense both need to present to have strong wins for their sides? I think the prosecution just needs to stand stand fast and keep doing what it's doing. I think the, uh, and that the defendant needs to just on cross-examine, keep doing what she's doing, and she's doing a great job of just chopping chopping down the witnesses and, and making it appear that they're not as accurate or um, as being as honest or know, know as much as they think they know about this case. I think, I think defense counsel is doing a great job. We've seen a fair amount of emotion from the defendant, not only in some of the evidence, videos from the past, but also even in the courtroom. Uh, how much potential does that have to humanize him for the jury? I saw it. I looked at it. I, th I think he's, he's been a lot more humanized than was the mom. Um, and, but that was from the very beginning, uh, even when they were being interrogated, if you will, in, in the police uh, station. Uh, this was the man that was saying, I love you, son, I love you. Um, he j he'll get more sympathy from this jury, although that should not be a, a factor. I think that that's something that they will factor in. They, they, the jury will think about it, you know? All right, well, we'll be watching. We'll have that full coverage for you starting on Monday. Trial attorney Johnny Hawkins, thank you for being here with us. Thanks, guys. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I'm, yeah. All good. Always good to All have right. you. Thanks, Johnny.